Now we're going to look at a simple pre-shift inspection for the machine. What we're about to cover does not replace the contents of the operator's manual. It's merely a supplement to help us visualize it. Always refer to the manuals if there's any doubt. I like to start the control system and reset the emergency stop system before beginning my inspection. This allows me to get out, perform my inspection, and have the machine waiting for me when I get back to it, instead of waiting on it to boot up. Continuing on, opening up the first hatch. What I want to look for in here is making sure that there are no leaks, no cables that appear to be damaged, and no signs of anything missing or out of place. The other thing we want to do is fill the rock drill oil. We have sight glasses here that indicate whether or not it's full, as well as the level sensor in the cabin. It's a good idea to keep this topped up. Under the second canopy, we have a few more things that we need to check before we start the machine. The first is the air filters for the engine and the compressor, making sure that they're present and in place and tightly fitted. We also want to make sure that the compressor receiver tank is full. Anywhere in the green on the gauge is considered good. We have a dryer here, which should be set to self-draining and doesn't require any real attention, but I like to make sure it's intact. The other thing I like to do is to make sure that the drain for the compressor regulator circuit dryer is in place and that has been drained off recently. Inside behind the receiver tank is a ball valve that is used to select the water injection system this is the selector for the water injection system for drilling mode, which is the position it's currently in, pointing to the inside of the machine, or as I like to remember, toward the water tanks. And then when pulled out toward the outside of the machine for the pressure washer, or like I like to think of, ready to wash the machine on the outside. I like to make sure that this is in the drilling position before I start my shift to avoid surprises and delays. Coming around to the non-cab side of the machine, I like to always keep my diesel exhaust fluid topped up. This prevents stopping in the middle of the shift to fill it and also ensures that I can use complete jugs to prevent contamination. Moving from there, I like to take a quick look at my dust collector skirt down below and open up this canopy and check my engine oil level here and add as needed here. While I'm in here, I also inspect for leaks, hoses that might be rubbing or other signs of damage. Underneath this canopy door, there's not much we need to inspect. However, it's always a good idea to open everything and have a check for leaks or hoses that may be damaged. The next thing I like to do on my pre-trip inspection is to make sure that the central lubrication pump is filled. Looking at it, this one could stand to have a little bit added. That's added through this fitting here. The other thing I like to do is check to make sure that my grease bucket has grease in it, and that's for my thread greaser. So that one's ready to go as well. Our washer fluid is also mounted back here, and I wanna make sure that that's topped up in case I need it. Another item of maintenance that needs to be attended to are the manual grease fittings on the feed beam. The first is the grease fitting for the hose drum. It lubricates the bearings. The second is the fitting that lubricates the bearings for the sprocket that keeps the time between the hose drum and the chain. Another thing we like to check during our pre-shift inspection is the battery box. Simply open these keys, and this door lowers down. On the D65 Mark II, we have a sliding battery tray to make inspections and battery changes easier. Once the batteries are pulled out, we don't need to inspect this daily, but if we had trouble, some of our main fuses are located here, and the connections for the battery can be readily inspected. We do want to make sure that our batteries are kept clean and free of debris, and that nothing builds up on them. One additional inspection we like to make sure we do before we start the engine of the machine is to drain any condensate from the compressor receiver vessel. This is done through accessing a valve inside of the battery box, removing a fitting, which may require a wrench, right there, setting it to the side, and then opening the valve. When opening the valve, you may see oil right away. Let it drain for a few seconds and make sure that there's no water. After a small amount is drained, we can be certain that there's no water on the bottom of the receiver tank and that the compressor will live a long and healthy life. After completing draining the receiver tank and being certain that all water's been removed, we want to reinstall the cap. After the cap's been reinstalled, we want to snug it up with a wrench, make sure the valve is closed, 
and continue on with our inspection. Now we've finished our walk around of the outside of the machine. It's time to start the engine. Before I do that though, I like to open the performance tab and check to make sure that I have enough fuel, diesel exhaust fluid, and all of the other things that we discussed, as well as temperatures and levels. Everything looks good here and I don't have any fault indicators, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the machine. 